Welcome to our review on smells. First thing then is we need to understand what a cosmetic is. So when we're referring to cosmetics, we're talking about any substance that's used to change a person's appearance or smell. And usually we're talking about for the better here, or at least we're hoping so. Now, this could be in the form of deodorants, skin creams, lipsticks, anything at all that you're using to try to make yourself either look better or smell better comes under the cosmetics category. Now, these cosmetics can come from a couple of sources. Either they can be natural sources, so things like plants, or they can be synthetic, which are the man-made ones. One of those cosmetics we use to try to make ourselves smell better are perfumes. Now, what we've got here then are a list of key properties and why the perfume needs it. So the first property, we need our perfume to evaporate easily. Now, if the perfume doesn't evaporate easily, it's never going to actually get off your skin. So no one's going to be able to smell it. So it's got to evaporate easily so the particles can get from your skin to people's noses. It needs to be non-toxic because it wouldn't be a very good selling point if people bought your perfume, put it on, and then got poisoned by it. So it needs to be non-toxic so it doesn't poison the user. We do not want it to react with water. Otherwise, as soon as someone got a little bit warm and started sweating, then we start seeing chemical reactions occurring on their skin. Again, not desirable in perfumes. We need to make sure it doesn't irritate the skin because again, as soon as you've put it on, you don't want to put your perfume on, then just spend the rest of the time scratching your neck, etc. because it's not an attractive look at the end of the day. And finally, we want it to be insoluble in water because we don't want to have a situation where you've put on your really expensive perfume to go out, stepped outside, light bit of rain, and it gets washed off straight away. Bit of a waste of money there. So we want it to be insoluble in water so it's not washed off easily. Remember those five properties and why we need them because it does come up every so often as an explain some properties of perfumes. So obviously the describing would just be it evaporates easily and the explain would be it evaporates easily because it has to then reach our nose. When thinking about perfumes, we need to understand this term volatility. So whenever we're talking about the volatility of a substance, we're measuring how easily it actually evaporates. So a very volatile liquid is going to evaporate very easily. And the reason behind that is that the attractions between the different molecules of the perfume are actually very weak. So that means they're easily overcome with just your body heat. So this means that they're going to change from the liquid to the gas and therefore transfer into the air very easily for us. When we're thinking about perfumes and the reason that they actually do smell nice, it all comes down to the fact that they contain this compound called an ester. So esters, quite simply, are compounds with pleasant smells. Now, we can make these in a lab by reacting an alcohol and an acid. And when we react those two together, we're going to make an ester and water. So I've given you an example there of a word equation. So ethanol is our alcohol and all alcohols end in OL. Ethanoic acid is our acid. So when we react ethanol and ethanoic acid, we make an ester called ethyl ethanoate, and we also make the water. Now there are a couple of conditions we need to remember for this reaction to take place, and that is that we've got to heat it up to 60 degrees centigrade and use sulfuric acid as a catalyst. So remember those two conditions, 60 degrees C and sulfuric acid as a catalyst. On the right hand side, I've just given you the displayed formula for the reaction. So on the top left, we can see our alco alcohol. And on the top right, we can see our acid. And then at the bottom, we've obviously got on the left hand side there is our ester. And on the right hand side is water, which is H2O.